In 1939, a young six-year-old boy named Paul Rokich looked over the landscape of his home in the Ochre Mountains in central Utah. The Ochre Mountains used to be lush, vibrant, and beautiful, but now they lay wasted, due in great part to a local copper mine that now boasts the largest open pit mine ever constructed in history. And when Paul looked over and he saw this devastation, he made a promise to himself that he would one day restore the Ochre Mountains back to their former glory. Now, he didn't get his chance to start until he was 25 years old. And he went up the mountainside with a few seeds and some saplings and began to plant. And he had to go out at night because the mine still technically owned the land and he didn't want to be caught or prosecuted for trespassing. And ecologists and biologists told him that this was impossible, that the lands here were too polluted, too wasted, too corrupted to ever take seed to anything. But Paul went anyways. And he went out for the next 15 years, slowly planting, replanting, watching some of his trees, his beloved trees, burn or get consumed by mudslides or other disasters. But he went out for 15 years. Even his wife didn't know what he was doing, thinking he was just out for night hikes. And after 15 years, he performed a miracle. And he decided to show the local mine exactly what he had been up to. To surprise, they didn't arrest him. They actually hired him to continue the restoration process of the Ochre Mountains, which continues to this very day. Now, the title of my talk is How to Write a Novel in One Year or Otherwise Transform Your Life. And you might be asking, what does this have to do with any of that? But it's the same exact principle. Small things consistently done over a large amount of time can create profound results. And for me, my goal and my vision wasn't to restore a mountain back to life. Mine was to write fiction. I was enthralled as a kid by fantasy books such as The Hobbit, which had castles and magic, wizards, dark lords, and adventure. But as time wore on, and as happens to many creatives, I decided to settle on a more stable career, something I loved, just not as passionately as writing. But that desire to write nagged me until it nagged me and it came at a point uh, where I was completely busy with life. I was working full time in my data an analyst capacity. I was taking a bunch of complex mathematical certifications exams for that career. I was volunteering at a number of organizations, some in leadership positions, and like most 20 year olds, I was trying to have a normal social life. But that desire stuck with me. And I started to do some research to see how could I actually write a novel, something that I had attempted, but I'd failed at many times. And I found that many authors will say, just write 500 words a day. And I thought, okay, that's nothing. That, that won't accomplish anything. And being a data analyst, I decided to run the numbers. And if I wrote consistently for 500 words a day for that year, I would have a 180,000 word novel by the end of it which is about three times the size of a normal novel, which floored me. This small, simple amount of writing done over a year would create profound results. But I knew that I couldn't write at that speed consistently, so I started to tweak this formula. And I was writing during lunch, so that was a good five days per week that I could dedicate to writing. And I figured I wanted to take some vacation time as well, so two weeks off sounded good. Plus, they had the benefit of having this numerical alliteration. And so my formula was born. If I wrote 500 words a day, 50 weeks out of the year, five days a week, I would have a 125,000 word novel at the end of that year. Just for comparison purposes, I've listed some of the word counts for other novels. My Beloved Hobbit is about 95,000 words. If you're into longer fiction, like A Game of Thrones, that's about 300,000 words. And if you decide to use this formula for yourself, your novel will be 125,000 words, or a little bit over Pride and Prejudice. Even if you just write 250 words a day, you'd still have a novel slightly bigger than the novel that launched Stephen King's career. Pretty impressive for something so small. You see, when I de dedicated myself to this, at the end of that year, 
I completed my first novel, a lifetime dream that I had wanted, that I had tried to and failed at. And that's the power of doing small, consistent things over a great amount of time. And for us as human beings, often we're too myopic about what we want to accomplish. We want to learn a new language now. We want to lose weight now. We want to write a novel now. And we forget about the power of doing small things over time. We forget that we could dedicate an entire year and accomplish miracles just with small steps. Take my formula of 555 and span it out over the next 40 years. I could write 40 novels and have an incredible legacy as an author, and that's just lunchtime. Imagine what I could do if I actually focused. Now, I learned another lesson, too, in my writing, and that is that when we pursue our dreams, even if it's a small steps, as long as it's diligent, we not only can accomplish miracles, but we can also bring healing and much-needed energy into our lives. And I learned this lesson while I was working on my second novel, and the character that I was writing became emotionally broken. She faced some traumatic suffering and trauma that she couldn't handle at the time. And the strange thing is, is that when I wrote that scene, I broke too. I had been undergoing some intense personal betrayals, the kind which involved judiciary battles, lawyers, and depositions, something that stole most of my free time and also strained every emotional fiber of my being. And writing had become a refuge for that, to give me the energy that I needed. And when I wrote this scene, the very next day, all of that pain, all that suffering, and the injustice of it all came crashing down on me. And when I was at work, I started to cry, just in my little cubicle, and I don't normally cry, and I certainly don't cry at work, but there I was, weeping. So I quickly rushed out of there, grabbed my lunch, because I knew I had to write. Because the scene I was supposed to write that day was where my character receives comfort, where she starts the healing process, finally, where someone finally comes to her aid. And I needed that scene as much as she did. And I'd put on sunglasses so that people wouldn't see me crying, and they fogged up as I was writing, and the tears were pulling down underneath them, leaking out when I went to rub them, rub them. And it was one of the most cathartic experiences of my life. And I realized something, that when we pursue our dreams, even with those small, diligent steps, it taps us into who we really are. And it allows us to tap into this incredible ocean of energy and power, even if it's just small, simple steps. Now, a word of caution, is that small things can become tyrannical. We're often told, just meditate 15 minutes a day, or just journal 15 minutes a day, or exercise 15 minutes a day, or 30 minutes a day. And pretty soon, these very tiny things can add up, and like grains of sand, they can consume all of our time. So with your dream, try to pick just one thing, the one thing that you want to do, that maybe you're afraid to start, it maybe seems like an insurmountable task. So it does make your heart sing. What could you accomplish if you dedicated the next year or the next 40 years or the next lifetime to it? Paul Rokic brought an entire mountainside back to life by just doing small things consistently over time. And for myself, I wrote a novel and I continue to write novels every year just by this simple formula and it brought incredible life and energy during desperate times and when I most needed it. So now I'll turn it to you. What will you accomplish? I'm excited to find out. Thank you. Union is a real-world community and life school dedicated to human well-being. Our regular events include parties, game nights, supper clubs, hikes, and thrive meetings to build deep levels of intimacy, empower us to grow, and improve our world. Our life school provides educational videos, articles, conferences, and educational courses. Visit our website at thriveunion.org to learn more.